Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 43, Jesus tells us that he has to declare the good news in other places and other towns. And what we see throughout Luke chapter 5 over this week as we're looking at these devotions, what we're going to see is that Luke is going to tell us stories that, is going, that are going to help us to understand exactly what that good news looks like. What does it mean? What is the message that Jesus has to bring? And so today we're looking at uh, sentences uh, 12 through 16, and we're looking at the story of the leper. Now what's interesting is uh, you might remember from yesterday uh, in chapter 5 verse 8, that story ends with Peter on his knees before Jesus declaring himself a sinner. And then today's story about the leper actually begins in verse 12 with the leper on his face before Jesus, declaring himself unclean. There's, there's some parallel, parallelism, parallelism? <laughs> That's a big word. There's some parallels happening there, isn't there? That Luke is drawing these two things together because he wants us to see the similarities, that there's something about Peter's declaration of sinfulness and the leper's dec declaration of his uncleanness that's similar. We can learn something about what it means that Peter said that he was a sinner by looking at the story of this leper. Uh, what we discover, uh, as only Dr. Luke can do, because he's a doctor, so it's natural that he's going to understand something about the destruction of disease in, in a person, so, right? So he tells us about this leper, but what Luke, what Dr. Luke understands about the leprosy that this man is experiencing is it's not something that destroys only his body, but that actually there's an emotional and a mental uh, destruction that happens as a result of his disease. Uh, there's a destruction because he's not only ill, but he's isolated, that he's shamed, that he's put outside of the community. Uh, and so in the same way then, we're learning something about sin here. We're learning something about the fact that sin not only destroys uh, a piece of us, but actually that it, it's destructive in a lot of areas of our lives. There's a quote uh, in a book called Life Together by a, a pastor uh, named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and this is what he says about sin. He says, sin wants to be alone with people. It takes them away from the community. The more lonely people become, the more destructive the power of sin over them. Sin wants to remain unknown. It shuns the light. In the darkness of what is left unsaid, sin poisons the whole being of a person. That it's very important to both Luke and to Jesus that we recognize that sin is destructive if it's left unchecked. But what's hopeful about this story is that sin is not, in the case of the leper, his uncleanness is not left, that because he falls before Jesus and he asks Jesus to make him clean, and Jesus' response is, I'm willing. He's willing to provide the way for him to be made clean, for him to be washed uh, of his disease and to be then restored. He's not only healed physically, but he's restored in community. He's literally brought back to life because anything that would have made his life worth living, he had lost because of his disease. And now as Jesus heals his physical body, he also restores him to life. And the Bible talks about this reality with our sinfulness. Ephesians uh, chapter 2, uh, sentences 1 and 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. But then down in verse 5, he goes on to say, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Or again in Colossians chapter 2, in sentence 13. It says, when you were dead in your sins and, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. We have this beautiful picture in this story that Dr. Luke reminds us that while sin is destructive of the whole person, that actually through the power of Jesus' death on the cross, we can be cleansed and brought to life again. It's not just a restoration of, a, of our um, spiritual selves, but it's actually a restoration of our whole lives, that He heals what's broken within us, that He restores those things that are lost, restores relationship with God, and actually restores relationship with community. And Bonhoeffer, in talking about sin, one of the, the last bits of that quote, he says that sin that has been confessed has lost all its power. Perhaps today there's some area of your life that you need to bring before Jesus, and like Peter and like the leper, you need to fall on your knees before him, and you need to declare to him that this is an area where I'm sinful. This is an area that has power over me. And just by confessing it to Jesus, you remove that power from your life and you allow Jesus to begin the work of restoration inside of you.